Good morning, everyone, or evening, depending where in the world you are. How are you all? Um, this is a different time that I normally do a Facebook Live, but I wanted to try a different time just to see who's out there. So how are you all? Um, you know, it's just send me a message, ask me a question, anything you like. And by the way, how do you like my hat? I love it because um, somebody at one of the events where I spoke at, somebody gifted it to me and I just, I just love it, don't you? Tell me what you think of it. Um, and let me tell you a secret actually. I'm wearing it because I'm having a bad hair day. <laughs> I know some of you probably relate. Um, unlike some people, really lucky people, who never have bad hair days at all. And did I just get photobombed? Is that you, Danny? <laughs> Man. Okay, yeah, he's really lucky. He never has bad hair days. And uh, yeah, and he keeps telling me that he's happy to shave my head for me if I want to. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere near that. So anyway, um, I'm here to tell you about a couple of things. I was interviewed recently for the Hay House World Summit, which is really exciting because it's like a hundred different authors, teachers, speakers are interviewed. And um, I spoke about embracing love or embodying love in a fear-based world. Many of you out there feel that we live in a world that is becoming more and more fearful. And the problem is the more that we buy into the fear, the more that we carry it with us and the more it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. To me, fear is an invitation to love more. The only way to drive out fear or to transcend fear is to increase love. And I'd love you to hear my interview on that summit. If you want to, if you want to tune into that summit, it's completely free. You just have to sign up and um, the link of where you sign up is going to be in the uh, uh, in the post in the post above this video in the description of this video. So please click on that to sign up. Also, at the moment, Hay House are offering four free videos if you sign up this week. So do sign up, check out the videos and also the interviews over the next, I think it starts on May 6th and it's gonna be for four weeks, is gonna be with over a hundred different teachers and authors. And what I like about listening to other teachers and authors who are here to spread inspiration and, and things like that and um, transformation um, is that it helps us to stay in that place of love or inspiration as opposed to a lot of what's out there in media, in the, in the general media outside, where a lot of it is fear-based because it seems that fear sells and fear sells advertising. So it becomes more important to embody love. So what do I mean when I say embodying love? What I mean is by doing things that you love doing. And first it starts off with realizing that you are love, that you are deserving, that you are worthy. One of the first things I'd ask you to check about yourself is, are you also open to receiving, receiving the gifts that are out there? Because when we're not open to receiving and when we're not, when we don't believe that we're worthy and deserving, our receiving channels are closed. When our receiving channels are closed, we don't receive love. So check in on yourself. Am I good at receiving or am I just giving and giving and giving and I don't know how to receive? When we don't know how to receive, that hole that is left within us because we're not receiving love to fill it, that gaping hole tends to be filled by fear. And this is why I tell people it's really important and the only way to push out the fear is to increase the love. We can't drive out the fear by focusing on fear. Um, I spoke about this uh, um, and similar things in detail in my interview on this Hay House Summit. But I also like to share with people ways in which we can increase the love within us. And I would love to hear your ideas as well. And I would love to hear your questions. But in the comments below, tell me who you are, tell me where you're from, and give me, some, give me some ideas of how you would increase love in your life. Let me tell you how I increase love in my life. I love to go out in nature. If I'm not feeling good, if I'm feeling down, depressed, or fearful, 
um, I never let it go into a full-blown depression or a full-blown um, uh, fear. It's just maybe a little bit of an edge of, of, oh gosh, look at the condition of the world and I'm just one person and there might be a little edge of that creeping in. As soon as I feel that creeping in, I don't focus on driving it out. I acknowledge that it's there. I acknowledge it because you have to accept who you are and where you are. And that's what it means to love yourself. Because when we deny it, we say, oh my God, no, I shouldn't be feeling that. I should know better. I shouldn't be feeling that. When we start doing that, we're not loving ourselves. We're actually saying there's something wrong with us and there's something wrong with the way I feel or think. So the first thing to do is acceptance of where you are and what you're feeling. Then the next thing I do is I ask myself, okay, so how can I increase the love in my life more? And I do it in so many ways. I, I listen to music or I go for a walk by the ocean. I love being by the ocean. By the way, I went to the ocean yesterday and I actually saw dolphins. I'm really lucky I only live two blocks away from the ocean. But uh, yesterday I actually spent the day lying on the beach and maybe I'll upload a photo actually later after this video. I'm gonna upload a photo of me sitting by the ocean. I wish I caught the dolphins. I kept trying to catch them on my camera, but um, they, were, they were really playing around. But every time I put my phone up to look at them through the phone, they disappeared. And when I put the phone back down, they appeared again. I think they knew what I was doing. But it was so beautiful because I felt I needed a little bit of nurturing support. And the minute I started to feel that, they started to appear. And there was a ton of them. But, um, but nature does that. The world does that. When you go out in nature, it seems to respond to what you need. So... My favorite thing to do is to go and immerse myself in nature. I also love listening to music. I love watching other inspirational teachers um, and speakers and spiritual teachers, which is why I wanted to share this, this link with you because I think you'll love so many of them, many great speakers. I mean, I love people like Mike Dooley. He's so funny and uplifting. Um, so, but there's many, many others and I don't really want to name them all because um, they're all fabulous and there's just too many of them. There's Kyle Gray, who's, I love Kyle's accent. He's just so adorable, but just so many wonderful speakers. Um, also, for those of you who are uh, sharing your hearts and hugs and smileys, here, right back at you, right back at you. And so the other things I do to increase love in my life is to ask myself, what would I be doing if I did love myself? I would, I would go gentle on myself, on whatever I'm feeling. And I'd love to hear from you your ideas of what would you do if you were feeling that you needed to increase love. Um, and another real quick thing I do is <clears throat> I just give myself a nice tight hug. And if you were all here, I'd say, let's all hug each other. Let's have a nice group, tight group hug, all of you. So um, have we got any questions? Yes, and we do. Michelle asks, what if a person is too sick to pursue their passions and do the things they love? Oh, see, um, even if you're really sick, and first of all, my heart goes out to you if you are really sick, I would f make sure that I am surrounded by people who feel uplifting to me, who support me in my journey, and who are uplifting. Um, this is one of the things I speak about often, and that is that when you are feeling sick, Ensure that you are with people who are not draining you and people who are uplifting you. So the very least you can do when you don't have the energy to pursue your passion is to be surrounded by people who make you feel uplifted, people who make you laugh, people who, who um, encourage you to believe in your own ability to heal, people who empower you, not those who disempower you, people who remind you that your physical body is smarter and wiser than you think. The other thing I would encourage you to do also is to tune into your body. And by the way, I'm, um, there's a meditation on my CD. Um, if you get a chance to, to look at it, it's my CD, Heaven, an Experiential Journey. There's a meditation on that that helps you to communicate with your body. I'll put a link to the, the, um, 
to that CD on Amazon. I'll put a link to it on this on this thread somewhere because there is an, a meditation that helps you to tune in and communicate with your body to ask your body what what it's trying to tell you and that's something I encourage you to do whether you buy my meditation or not it doesn't matter you can do this on your own even at night before you go to bed ask your body to give you the signs or the signals or to communicate with you what is it trying to tell you what is the discomfort the illness trying to tell you and then you can go to sleep and see what comes to you through the night so thank you for your beautiful question Michelle Geraldine is asking if you can speak about controlling fear in a negative medical situation or how to calm her fear dealing with medical issues. Oh, Geraldine, my heart goes out to you as well. And it's pretty similar to what I just said to, um, to Michelle. It's really important for you to, um, to surround yourself with people who are going to remind you of how powerful you are and your, how powerful your body is. One of the things that I really um, wish was different was our medical paradigm. I really think they have it all wrong and we live in an upside down world where when you go in for a medical diagnosis they focus on the illness and you end up feeling more fear when in that time when you're dealing with a health challenge you actually need to feel powerful and strong not fearful and disempowered. It's the opposite of what we need to be feeling. And um, what I tell people is that when they're dealing with a medical challenge, the first thing you have to do is work with a team of doctors or in a medical institution that is going to make you feel empowered and supported. If, if it was me and the doctors or the medical institution I was in was making me feel fearful and disempowered, I would actually change doctors or get another or work or find another practitioner. I really would. My suggestion is to always have people helping you through your physical challenges, your medical challenges. Always have people who empower you, which means they remind you constantly about your body's own ability to heal and who also ask you questions like, um, have you suffered a trauma recently? Are you feeling lonely? Does your life have purpose? Um, do you have people in your life who you love and who love you? Questions like that. You need to answer questions like that. You need to go on an inward journey because most illnesses are actually wake up calls to something that is more spiritual, emotional, mental, stressful. It's also a wake up call to change the course of your life. There are all these other factors to look into. And also, in addition to that, you can look at things like how you're supporting your body physically, nutritionally, and all these things. Um, so I don't believe that the cure for medical illnesses, particularly cancers, lie in drugs alone. I truly don't. So thank you for your beautiful question. Jaspreet asks, what do you do if you have a family member? In her case, it's uh, her widowed mother who's going through depression and it, it's draining on her. She's trying her best, but it really is taking a toll on her because she's having to work so hard to w raise her own vibration. That is a beautiful question, Jaspreet. So the question is, what do you do if you're taking care of somebody who is um, draining on you because they are so sick? So I went through the same issue before I even got sick myself, that I was always there for other people and they were draining me. And eventually when I got my own diagnosis, um, there was a small part of me that felt, ah, now I get to take care of myself. So what I wanna tell all of you is you don't need a medical diagnosis to take care of yourself. I want you to give yourself permission now to take care of yourself first. Take care of yourself because if something happens to you, who's going to be there for those people anyway? Who's going to be there for you? So I want you to give yourself permission to take care of yourself. When I say take care of yourself, I mean including uplifting yourself um, pursuing your happiness, your joy, 
fulfilling your reason to be here, finding your purpose. It really means uplifting yourself because when you bring a drained, tired self to somebody who's sick, you're not actually helping them. You're really not because they're sensitive. They can feel your energy. You're actually doing it to relieve your own obligation or your own guilt. Um, that was me. I used to feel guilty when I would be doing my own thing and uplifting myself if somebody was sick. But I now know better. I know that they need me to be well if I want to be there for them. Nobody wants somebody who's drained and sick to come and uplift them. You need to uplift yourself first before you can uplift anyone else. So thank you for that question, Jaspreet. Uh, Amanda asks, how do you stop being angry at what's going on in the world? I believe we should all be doing something. I agree with you that we need to be doing something. I totally agree. But I'm going to ask a question right back at you. How does your anger and sharing your anger with everyone around you help the condition of the world? We need to be doing something. We need to be spreading love. We absolutely need to be doing that. And I thank you for your question because I like your passion. It means you're really sensitive. So what we need to do when we're angry about something that's going on in the world, we need to ask ourselves this question. I don't like what's out there, so what would I like to see instead? So the question is always, what would I like to see instead? And when you get clarity on what you would like to see instead, that's what you spread. You don't spread the anger you feel about, um, about what you're seeing out there. You spread the awareness of what you like to see instead. So thank you again for that very important question because it's something a lot of us feel. We want to be doing something about it. Sunita asks, how to respond to jealous colleague? <laughs> I like that. With love, absolutely with love. And remember, in a, in a sense, jealousy means they want what you have, and it also means that they are lacking in something. So don't take it personally. It's about them. It's not about you. Um, continue to be who you are. Don't dim your light because other people are jealous. Uh, just be aware that they actually want what you have and just be open and sharing towards them and invite them into your world to be a part of it. And whatever you do, just share your love with them because that's really what they want. And to everyone, um, thank you for your responses and your emojis. And thank you. I'm just going to share a comment. A lot of people are answering your request to, to share how they spread love and increase love. This one comment, Sandra says, I am 75 years young and I spread love by giving hugs to everyone I meet and tell them how glad I am to see them. Oh, that is so beautiful. That is so beautiful. I think we should all do that. <laughs> we should all do that. And we should all do that at least once a day to share our love, tell people, but I think we should do that all the time. I love that. Viral says, my heart tells me that I can't please people anymore, so I have to face the challenge of losing them all. Please guide me. Oh, you won't lose them. You won't lose them when you please yourself because when you start being yourself, people will love you for who you are. Remember, when you're trying to please other people, you are attracting a lot of people who may who are with you for what you're doing not for who you are and interestingly when I changed because you know when I uh, for those of you that don't know my story I had cancer and I almost died from cancer I went into a coma but the person that came out of the coma was different from the person who went into the coma I realized I couldn't please people anymore because I was becoming so drained myself from pleasing people. And I was afraid of being the new person because I felt I would lose all my friends. But here's what happened. I had to go on a path, a journey of self-discovery of who I really am. If I'm not the people pleaser, if I'm not the doormat, then who am I? And at first it felt like people were staying away from me. And it felt like I was attracting new people who liked this new me. But as I started to grow in this new me, the people who I felt I'd lost, they came back. 
It's just that I had to get comfortable in being this person who I truly am and being unafraid of being who I truly am. And the person who I am is someone who is worthy and deserving of receiving love. So many of us who are people pleasers, who are doormats, we're unable to receive love. And that's a tragedy. That really is because there's so much love out there and we need to feel it too. The more we can receive love, the more love we have to share with others. And, and tell me if any of you fall into this, this category where you're really good at giving. You give and you give and you give of yourself. Even when you're drained, you give. But the minute someone shows love right back to you, you feel you have to make it up to them and you have to give them double what they've given you. So I want to ask you to be aware of this and start doing this. When you receive love, I just want you to bathe in it and say thank you. Thank you. And think of yourself as um, a battery or a smartphone that needs charging. So when you are receiving love, that's you being charged. And when you're giving love, you're sharing your charge with other people. You can't keep sharing your charge without charging yourself. So always allow yourself to receive. And then when you give people, it won't feel like you're people pleasing because you will have so much charge in you that it'll be overflowing out to other people. Anita shares that her younger brother passed recently after 51 years of heartache on this planet. Aww. Is there anything you'd like to share about that? So first of all, I want you to know that your younger brother is, he is, first of all, actually my heart goes out to you truly because I can't imagine, actually, I can't imagine what it's like to lose a, a sibling. I lost a sibling when I was very young, but when you're a mature adult, it's it's very hard to lose a sibling. I've heard from people who've lost siblings, so I can't even imagine what you're going through. However, I want to say to you that he is fine. He is absolutely fine. He's looking out for you. Um, he is... Um, he is freed from the heartache that he's been going through and he is watching over you. I'm certain of that. He would want you to know he's fine and he would want you to know that you need to do whatever you need to do for yourself to, to get over, to grieve him and just be gentle with yourself. But don't feel guilty if you start finding joy and happiness again because that would make him really happy. It would really make him happy if you would find joy and happiness again because life is a gift. And even though he's on the other side, he doesn't want you to waste your life. He truly wants you to live your life fully and find joy in every minute of it. So thank you for your beautiful question and my heart goes out to you. Would you like one more question? Okay, we'll okay. take one last question. Um, Sunita asks, how do we have the courage to share our story or traumatic experiences to generate awareness? Oh, sharing your story is the most beautiful thing you can do because, and the way that you do it is that you imagine you're sharing it with one person because it's going to help people for sure. It doesn't matter how few or how many people it helps, you need to share your story and be vulnerable because people will relate to you if you're vulnerable. Share your fears, share your vulnerability. People need to hear it because today in the age of social media, we all think everybody has a fabulous and flawless life. We all think everyone has a life better than ours, but you can't imagine how many people you help when you share your vulnerability and when you share your trials and your tribulations and how you get over them. Um, imagine if I didn't share my story, how, you know, because I'm now, I am now so motivated by all of you who tune in and listen to me and who ask me questions and who, um, who watch my videos. And by the way, I have a YouTube channel, so please check it out. Um, it's posted somewhere there on Facebook. I have a YouTube channel. Please subscribe to it. I have a lot of videos on it. And let me tell you, I said to you, share as though you're sharing with one person. I share as though I'm sharing with one person. And that one person I share with every time I share is 
the person that I used to be before I had cancer, before I had the near-death experience, the person who was the people pleaser, that person who was the doormat, that person I used to be who was so drained but I would still give, keep giving and giving, who didn't know how to receive, that person that I used to be, that is the person I share with every time I'm in front of this camera sharing with you, every time I'm writing, every time on, I'm on Hay House Radio, I'm saying the things that I wish that person knew because if that person knew this, they would not have got cancer. So please share your message. The world needs to hear it. And, um, you know, and on that note, I would love for you to tune in to my YouTube videos. I would love for you to check out the Hay House link and listen to all the other beautiful teachers, authors, inspirational speakers. There's so many of them and many of them are my friends and I just love them. And also I want to thank all of you for watching and if you feel that anything I've said is helpful or useful to anyone you know, please share this with video to, with them. And, um, and so tune in. I'm going to be doing more Facebook Lives. Check out my radio show. And in the meantime, I'm sending you all a big hug and lots of smileys and hearts. And have a beautiful day and a beautiful week ahead of you. Love you.